Hi, good morning, good morning everybody. It's actually good afternoon, so I am getting started a little bit late today, so I do apologize. Thank you all for joining week after week. So, I'm going to let the app build an audience for a little bit. But today we are talking about insurance. So if you're watching during the rebroadcast, each week we have a conversation about personal finance and different things that people have to face when it comes to their finances. So I started Finance Friday on my blog, cleverlychanging.com, about six years ago. It will be seven years coming up in May, so I am so excited. We have changed our Finance Fridays from just being a blog post on my blog to more of a conversation. And that's basically what we do on Finance Fridays. So you have an opportunity to ask questions, to um, give us suggestions for topics, and to let people know just different terms that they may not be familiar with in the financial world so that you are more aware of what's going on with your finances. So today, our big topics are the different types of insurances that are available. I know that each week I've definitely mentioned the importance of having life insurance, but I haven't actually gone in depth to explain what the difference is between term life insurance and whole life insurance. So if you are not fully aware of what that means, term life insurance is for a specific time period. So you buy life insurance based on the term. So if you, you could do five year, 10 year, 15 and um, 30 year, I believe. So that's generally how it is um, set up. You set up to pay into an insurance policy that will insure you for that specific term. Unfortunately, when it comes to term life insurance, that is not going to cover you for your entire life. So an insurance that would cover a person for their entire life is called whole life insurance. So it's very important for people to understand the difference between term life insurance and whole life insurance, mainly because some people may think, oh, well, you know, I have this policy, whatever happens to me, it's going to um, cover, cover my expenses, cover my debt and different things like that. So that's not always the case. So there are some things that you should really be aware of when it comes to term and whole life insurance. So with whole life insurance, that's more of a permanent guaranteed life insurance because it is set to insure you for your entire life. So what does that mean? That means that you're paying every month, usually the premiums for whole life insurance are pretty expensive um, because it's really covering you for your entire life. But here's the thing, whole life insurance is going to, it's more of an investment because you're paying into the insurance, you're paying cash each month and you're not saying, oh, I'm only gonna take out you know, a certain um, amount when, um, you know, if something happens to you, basically you're paying into an insurance policy. Of course, the policy is going to have a set number, but when you pay into that policy, you are going to be able, some of that policy, some of what you pay, it goes towards the premium, the entire amount that one day will be paid out to your loved ones, to your beneficiary. And it also has a cash value. So this is, that is very, very different um, from term life insurance. Term life insurance does not have a cash value like whole life insurance. So when you're paying into whole life insurance, that cash value is something that you definitely, when you're thinking about these things, these are some terms that you need to get clarification on when you talk to your finance financial advisor and you decide if you need to set up 
term life insurance, our whole life insurance. So that is something that um, I know there are many financial advisors who actually advise against term life insurance because, again, it's only for a set period of time. And a lot of people don't always understand that. They think, oh, well, I have term life insurance, so I'll be covered. So if you have term life insurance and you have a 10-year policy, after that 10 years is up, you need to, re you need to refigure and reevaluate and, and get a new policy. So it's very different and you, you need to make sure you have full understanding that is comprehensive so that you know what you're paying into. So that's pretty much the difference between term and whole life insurance. So let me just make sure that I covered everything that I wanted to about that. So, so yeah, so term life insurance is just going to give you um, a limited amount of protection versus whole life insurance, which is going to give you a greater protection. So typically, typically with the whole, with the term life insurance, you're only covered for a five, 10 or 15 year period. So that's not a lot of time. I'm definitely planning to live longer than 15 years. At least that's what I'm hoping. So term life insurance probably isn't going to be something that is going to be um, very um, beneficial for me personally. And so that's something to keep in mind. When you're thinking about life insurance, you need to understand what your needs are. Typically, when a person gets life insurance, they're looking at life insurance because they want to be able to pay off their debts after they pass away and they don't want to leave burdens on their family, family members. And so you want to be able to, of course, cover your funeral and your burial but you also want to pay down those debts if you own a home, if you have kids, you want to, if you own a home, you want to be able to cover what's left on that mortgage. You also want to be able to pass something along to your kids. So that's something that is very important to me that we discuss in our Finance Fridays is just building wealth that you can pass down to the next generation. And so I think it's so important important for people to understand that what the money that you're building, the money that you're saving isn't just to make your life comfortable while you're here, but it's also to put something aside so that you're building a legacy within your family and your kids, your family members are able to um, to have something in place if something were to happen to you. So that's something to keep in mind. The next type of insurance, which we have talked about on Finance Friday when we talked about home ownership, is homeowner's insurance. So this is something that is very important for people to understand. If you have a home, a lot of times if you're getting your financing from a bank, they will actually require that you get homeowner's insurance. And so... What I want you guys to understand about homeowners insurance is that you can get a very good price for your homeowners insurance if you shop around. So a lot of times homeowners insurance can be bundled with your car insurance. Um, if you're um, if you have other types of insurance, a lot of times those policies can be bought together. And so um, I know that when we first bought our first home, we were able to, to bundle our insurance with our car insurance company. But you want to make sure that you shop around because not all insurances are going to offer you a really good deal. They're not going to give you a huge discount if you bundle the service. So you want to make sure you go with a service, with a company that is going to give you a good discount for putting your policies with them. It's very important to shop around to get several quotes and to know what they're going to ask for. So when you are getting homeowner's insurance, you're not just... So the, the point of homeowner's insurance isn't necessarily to um, put insurance on your mortgage. So you're not 
let's say you have a $600,000 house. You're not taking out a homeowner's policy for that, for what's left on your mortgage. Basically, you're taking out homeowner's insurance so that if something happens to your house, you will be able to cover your house. So let's say, um, you know, let's say even if there's a break-in, you're going you're gonna to insure the things in your house that are valuable. So if you have jewelry, if you have very high-end appliances and very high-end um, te technology, and you're going to insure those things. So if you uh, have a business in your house, you're going to insure your house. Um, you're going to tell your insurance provider that you have a business. So you're going to want to insure your computers, your laptops, all those type of things. You're going to want to insure them. You want to keep in mind that homeowner's insurance is best not to get that policy for as much as your mortgage because typically that's going to be much more than the cost um, to rebuild that property. So a lot of times you're, with your homeowner's insurance, you really want to cover enough to rebuild if something were to happen. So what I want you to do if you are thinking about home ownership and you're looking into um, different homeowners policies, definitely talk to your financial advisor. You should have a good financial advisor who can answer your questions and provide you with a clear understanding of what you're buying and why you need it. So one thing that people should keep in mind is that when you have homeowners insurance, a lot of times you pay that along with your mortgage. So if you're shopping around for a home and you're thinking about how much you um, can pay a month for a home, you also need to keep in mind this is the amount that, this, um, that your homeowner's insurance is going to be on top of that monthly cost. So when you pay your mortgage to your mortgage company each month, you're also paying for not only your, the premium for your mortgage, you're also paying for your homeowner's insurance and also your taxes. So those are things to keep in mind. All right, so with homeowner's insurance, you want to make sure um, if, you, if things really happen, which they really have, a lot of times they rarely happen. So you want to go with the higher deductible so that your premium cost is less. That's something that is optional. You definitely should talk to your financial advisor to see if that's the best situation for your needs. So everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different. And so you want to have a financial advisor who can advise you and talk to you about what plans that are offered that are best for your situation. And if you have any questions about homeowners insurance, definitely leave a comment in the comment box. If this information that you're hearing is very helpful and you're understanding the terms, definitely share it with someone else. Um, earlier, we talked about term life insurance and whole life insurance, and now we're going to transition into car insurance. So with car insurance, a lot of times um, people often, when they get car insurance, <laughs> they also have to pay a monthly cost. And so when you have to, when you take out a loan to get the car, you are generally required to also get insurance. If you are taking out a loan on automobile and, and you have to get automobile insurance, remember to get gap insurance. What in the world is gap insurance? Well, gap insurance is when you have a loan and if your car was to be in an accident and the um, you're not done paying off your car, if that car was to be in an accident, the insurance provider, if you don't have gap insurance, they're only going to pay you the value of what that car was worth at the time of the accident. And here's the thing, when you drive that car off the lot that first day, it begins to depreciate. So the amount that you paid for the car is going to be greater than the amount that the car is worth. But if you get gap insurance, they will pay you, they will pay off the remainder of that loan and give you what the car is worth. So if you have a loan 
on the card, you need to get gap insurance. That is very important to understand. So um, we also want to talk about, um, so with, um, with your car insurance, you want to have a comprehensive policy. So you, you want it to be able to cover your medical expenses if you were in an accident. You want it to be able to cover collision. So if, if there's an accident where you and another car or you and a pedestrian collide in some kind of way, you want to be able to, um, to be able to handle the other person who's in the accident as well as you. So you want to make sure that you have comprehensive insurance so that you're taken care of and the accident doesn't become a burden on your life. And if you don't have the proper insurance, it will be a burden. So definitely talk to um, an ad your financial advisor. Again, I cannot stress enough how important it is to get a full understanding of all the clauses that are found within insurance policies because you want to make sure that you're completely covered. So with, um, with a car insurance, there are certain clauses that you should be aware of. All right, so um, with car insurance, it's also going to be based on your credit score. It's going to be based on the length of time that you've been driving. It's going to be based on if you've taken like a driver's class in the past. If you have, that's going to actually make your insurance lower. So I think a lot of companies say within three years, um, if you've taken a driving class within three years, they'll actually lower the cost of, in, of your insurance. With all insurances, you do need to shop around and get the best quote for you and your situation. Also, let's see, um, you want to make sure that um, you have a good driving history. So your the cost that you pay for car insurance is also going to be, I just listed some things, but it's also going to be pay, um, based on your driving history as well. So the less amount of accidents that you get into, the better. That's going to make you um, a better candidate for insurance. So sometimes people um, don't People who get in accidents often, and I do know some people that do, like every year I hear that they've been in another accident, their insurance premiums are very, very expensive because they're a risky person to insure. You don't want to seem like you're a high risk so try not to get in accidents. <laughs> I know that sounds very crazy, but it's the truth. And that's the same with like homeowners insurance. With homeowners insurance, if you're always contacting your homeowners insurance to fix something, you have become a risk for them. And they are going to either drop you or increase your premium. So that's something that you should keep in mind. Only use these services if you have to. And um, so definitely know your clauses. Like with homeowner's insurance, a lot of times you have to have additional homeowner's insurance if there's a flood. So everything isn't included with your homeowner's insurance. There are other um, addendums and amendments that you can add to your insurance, like drain, storm drain coverage, sewer coverage, and um, flood insurance, especially if you live in an area with a lot of natural disasters, a lot of times it's going to re be required. Like if you live in a flood zone, it's going to be required from your mortgage company that you get flood insurance in addition to your homeowner's insurance. And again, a lot of times with all these insurance, you can... Um, there's generally... You can bundle them with the same company and get special discounts. So... Those are some of the major insurances that most people are going to, um, to need. There are other insurances like um, accidental um, death and dismemberment insurance <laughs> that also exists. So you kind of have to, um, to research what insurances are out there and see if they fit your life. And if they are worth you paying into those policies so that if something were to happen to you or something were to happen to your property, it will be covered. 
I know that recently, just personally, I have had to um, read the fine print in my insurances just so that I would really know what was covered. Um, last year, I was in a car accident. I was actually parked and someone someone's car drove onto my car and um, it was a scary experience for me. And so um, I really had to learn what was covered in my policy because I had do lots of doctor bills. And um, so it's important to know your policies so that when something happens, you're not like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? So you need to know the numbers of who to call who um, you need to know. A lot of times there's a 1-800 number that you would call and you would put in a claim and they ask you certain questions so you need to know. With anything, it's also good to keep a log. So if you have a journal or a log book with whatever happens, if it's an accident, you need to keep a log of how you're feeling each day. If there's like homeowner's insurance, you need to take pictures of the things in your house that you're insuring, especially like if you're insuring special things like your laptops, your camera equipment, if you have a business in your home, take pictures, keep receipts, and keep them in a, in a safe so that if something were to happen, you can prove. So this is, um, you know, what I had. This is how much I paid for it. Now, when you buy something, it begins to depreciate. So you also need to put, the money, put those things in your safe, but you also need to remember that you're not you're probably going to get the replacement value and not the cost that you spent on it. So that's something to keep in mind. So just to recap, we talked about term life insurance, which is for a limited amount of time. We talked about whole life insurance, which will cover you for your entire life and also has a cash component where you're investing in the policy. So that's something to understand. The next type of insurance we talked about was homeowner's insurance. With homeowner's insurance, you can also cover things that are found within your house. You want to keep your receipts. You want to take pictures. You want to have a good idea. You want to make sure that you're upkeeping, um, you're keeping up your house. You're doing the home maintenance so that they won't see you as a liability and not cover things that um that may go wrong because they're saying because they could say you weren't maintaining the house well so you want to do all those things also um, we talked about automobile insurance with automobile insurance if you have an accident you want to make sure that there's that you have a camera a lot of us have cell phones that are smartphones with cameras you want to take pictures of the accident. You want to take pictures if there's injuries, if you have injuries. You want to take pictures of your injuries. You want to take um, keep a log. You want to write down what happens every day, what happened during the accident. Because you want to be able to prove your case if something were to happen and you were to have to go to court or something like that. The next thing you want to do, we also, we briefly mentioned another type of insurance that's available, which is accidental and dismemberment insurance. That insurance um, is going to be uh, insurance that you could have. Thank you for sharing, Keisha. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate your support. And um, we're just kind of sharing terms, just giving people an understanding of what different types of insurances are that exist in the market. I feel like when it comes to insurance, a lot of us just aren't aware of, you know, what the insurance is and why we need it, especially like with, um, with gap insurance. I know so many people who have had car insurance and they took out a loan and then they were in a car accident and they weren't done paying off that car and come to find out they didn't have gap insurance. So the only thing that the insurance was willing to cover is the amount of, that was left on the loan. I mean, they weren't able to cover them. Unless you have gap insurance, they won't cover what is left on your loan. So they'll only cover the cost of um, your car at that moment. And the moment you drive the car off the lot, it's 
it would have depreciated. So it's no longer worth as much as you're paying for it. So if you have gap insurance, they will pay what's left on that loan. Otherwise, you're going to still, if you're in an accident and your car is totaled, you're still going to have to pay the entire length of that loan. You're still going to have to pay all the money back that you borrowed, even if your car is totaled, unless you have gap insurance. So remember, comprehensive insurance for your car is typically better, even if you pay, even if you've paid off your car. So um, you want to make sure you have coverage if something were to happen to you and you need to go to hospital to the hospital. It's also good to have rental car insurance and road, roadside assistance with your car. Like if you don't have AAA on the side, a lot of people don't because they can get it through their car insurance. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. So I'm just sharing these things with you so that you can talk to your financial advisor about them and find out what type of insurance you need, um, which is per what type of insurance is perfect for you and your needs. Your type, so if you're single, the type of insurance that you get may be a little different than someone who is married with dependents and other things. So it's definitely important for you to read the clauses in your insurance. Don't just get insurance and let somebody tell you those top points. Definitely read through the policies before you sign on the dotted line. That's with, with whatever contract that you're looking into and you're signing, read the fine print. I can't stress that enough. So I hope you all have learned something in today's Finance Friday. I appreciate you guys tuning in week after week. If you're tuning in later after this, um, this broadcast has aired live, remember to give me some thumbs up. Definitely let me know if you learned something new, if you appreciate these discussions. So this is episode 14, I believe. It's 13 or 14. Um, it's either episode 13 or 14. I definitely have to check that. And um, definitely look at our past episodes. And if you have suggestion topics for upcoming shows, definitely let me know in the comments section. I appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. All right. Bye.